So we all know that there's plenty of differences out there between the Stingray and the Z06. The main one being the engine, the LT2 versus the LT6. So what are the differences and what are the similarities? So when it comes to the 8th generation Corvette, we all know that there's a lot of differences now between the new, newest uh, Z06 version of the car and the Stingray that's been out for a few years now. Obviously there's going to be a couple of the models coming out with the upcoming uh, E-Ray coming out, the ZR1 and the Zora, but those aren't out yet so I'm not going to focus on those, but I'm going to go over some differences between the two cars. Perhaps you're in the market for one of them and you're trying to decide which one is best for you and you're not really uh, sure about a lot of things, some things are confusing to you, so I'm going to break some stuff down. Now, the obvious differences between a lot of them, as everybody knows, the big one is the engine, which is what I'm going to cover in this video. The LT2 engine, which is found in the Stingray, and then the LT6 engine, which is found in the Z06. Now, you've got a bunch of other differences as well, too. Different suspension components, spring rates, things like that, bigger brakes, ceramic brakes available in the Z06, so on and so forth. Um, the wide body, some minor little like plaques in here and there, like stuff on the interior and stuff like that. Um, but then there's a lot of little various differences between like the front bumper and rear bumper, the fascia, the fascias and whatnot. So, but I'm not going to cover all those. The main thing I'm going to go over today is the LT2 versus the LT6 engine. What are its differences? What are its similarities? Now, I've broken this down into a relatively broad um, way of comparing it. So I'm going to break everything down between specs or specifications. The engine itself, meaning the long block itself, talking about the components of the cylinder heads and the block, the rotating assembly, things like that. Uh, the intake components, the exhaust components, and miscellaneous components, such as starters, alternators, things of that nature. And I'll go over all that. Now, for the sake of this video, you'll kind of see everything I'm going to put. I'm going to list it all category by category and show you what's the same and what's different. Anything that is written in green is going to be same between the two. Anything that was written as red is going to be different, just to make it a little easier for you to kind of figure out what is what. So we'll go ahead and get started here. The first thing I'll go over is the specifications or the specs. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over here is the actual specs of the engine itself. Now we can sit here and talk for days about all different uh, specs on the engines, but I'm just going to cover, like I said, the big main things here, and I'm going to get into some more detail-oriented stuff later on. As you can also see, I moved locations here, a little bit of better lighting, so that way you can see this bore a little bit better, hopefully it's a little easier. So, first thing we're going to go over is all the differences, the LT2 versus the LT6. As far as the LT2, you have an overhead valve engine, where the LT6 is a dual overhead cam. So the LT2, meaning you have one valve per um, intake and exhaust, and two valves per cylinder uh, on the engine itself, and they have overhead valves where the cam itself is actually in the block, and then you have the push rods going under the rocker arms and, and activating the valves that way. Where the LT6 has a dual overhead cam or double overhead cam, either way, and it has two valves per cylinder, two for intake, er, per intake and exhaust. So two for intake, two for exhaust, meaning you have four valves per cylinder total, but you have dual overhead camshafts. So you have two camshafts on top of each cylinder head for a total of four because you have two cylinder heads. So uh, overhead valve on the LT2, Dual overhead cam on the LT6, which is pretty new for GM, at least in this sense. Obviously, they've done it before, but it's never really been in a Corvette before. Not really a thing you typically see in a Corvette. So, not that dual overhead cams are new to GM by any means. So, but uh, for a Corvette, it's something that they haven't really seen before. Um, the LT2 is rated at 495 horsepower at 6,450 RPM and 470 pound-feet of torque. At 5150 RPM. Now that is with the uh, performance exhaust that can come in. So if you have the performance exhaust in the Z51 package, those are your numbers. If you do not have that, just minus each one of them by five. It becomes 490 and 465. Uh, for the LT6, you have 670 horsepower at 8400 RPM. Now some people will think that that's 8600 RPM, but what happens is um, 8600 RPM is actually when you have fuel cutoff. So it's 670 horsepower at 8,400 RPM is where it hits that peak, and then 8,600 RPM is where that fuel cutoff occurs. So in case you ever hear that, that's where the um, difference is in with that. And then you have 460 pound-feet of torque at 6,300 RPM. You'll see that the LT2 actually makes more torque, pretty much because it's a larger displacement engine. The LT2 is a 6.2 liter, and the LT6 is a 5.5 liter. Um, but uh, you'll see that this one actually makes 10 pound-feet of torque more, and it makes it a little lower RPM too. 
pretty much because the LT2 doesn't really rev, I mean, it can rev to 6300, but you know, that's not typically where you see torque numbers, but because of the design of the LT6, that's where you're gonna see that number come in. Now, as far as the difference, uh, differences, you have the bore to stroke ratio, 1.12 to 1.3. So what bore to stroke ratio is, this is exactly what it sounds like it is. Take the bore and divide it by the stroke, and that gives you the bore to stroke ratio. So 1.12 times 1.3, and uh, we'll go over the bar stroke in a second here, where those differences come into play. Uh, the LT2 has a compression ratio of 11 and a half to one, while the LT6 is 12 and a half to one. LT2 has a combustion chamber size of 59 cc's, and the LT6 is 58.8. So very, very close, very similar as far as the uh, combustion chamber size itself. But uh, you're gonna see the differences in the bar stroke and where that comes into play. So for bore on LT2, you have 103.25 millimeters, the bore. So in case you don't know what the bore is, that is basically the um, diameter of the piston itself from end to end, okay? So if you have an actual piston itself going across there, that measurement from there to there, that's your bore, okay? Uh, then you have a 92 millimeter stroke, meaning the piston from bottom dead center to top dead center travels 92 millimeters up. Um, and then for the LT6, you have 104.25, so about the same bore, but look at the stroke, it's only 80 millimeters, so it's a lot shorter, which is very typical of a flat plane crank engine where you do that, you have that high revving, uh, so you don't want to have that very long stroke. Um, as far as uh, the direct injection fuel system, the LT2 only has one pump, it has one pump that's located in the valley, and it runs at 2,175 PSI, which is a little bit higher than the LT1 previously before, which was 2,100 PSI. The LT4s were a little higher, I believe they were like 2,800, 2,900, um, and the, uh, uh, for the direct injection on that, excuse me. The LT6, you'll see, actually has two direct injection pumps. So it has one pump for each cylinder head, each of them running at 5,076 PSI or 5,076 system pressure once it gets to that high side. Uh, as far as the firing order, of course, because the LT2 is a cross plane crank and the LT6 is a flat plane crank, the firing order is gonna be much different too for um, a multitude of different reasons, just the way the crank is and because of the exhaust scavenging. So the LT2 is 18726543. However, if you have cylinder deactivation on, you also uh, it goes down to 1764. Uh, for the LT6, your firing order is going to be 1438-7632. Um, a couple of things I want to touch on here too, you notice I put the 23.7 right there. Uh, that was just a little reminder for me to let you know also too that the LT6 actually has a 23.7 millimeter shorter deck height than the LT2 engine itself. So I'll come into that a little bit later when I talk about the actual long block and the block itself. Um, just another thing I want to touch on also too, just in case uh, some people are not understanding some of these numbers, which roll mostly uh, they're self-explanatory, but the um, uh, compression ratio. So in case you don't know exactly what compression ratio is, it's fairly simple. So say you have a cylinder right here, okay? And then inside the cylinder you have the piston. It's a terrible drawing, I know, but and it goes up and down inside, okay? When the piston is at bottom dead center, let's say you have 100 milliliters of air, okay? So that would be volume one, we'll call that 100, okay? Volume one divided by volume two gives you compression ratio. So let's say as that piston comes up and now is at this point in the combustion chamber up here, you now only have 10 milliliters of air or whatever unit of uh, volume that you're using to measure it. So you have 10, okay? So then volume one is 100 and volume two is 10. 100 divided by 10 is 10. So that gives you a 10 to one compression ratio. So that's basically how those compression ratio numbers come up. Now, as far as the similarities when it comes to specs on the LT2 and the LT6, there aren't really a whole lot in this particular category. They're both V8s, they're both at 90 degrees, which basically means, if you don't know what that is, um, if you ever look at the V of the engine, if you were looking at it like head on, say that was the V, this angle right here would be 90 degrees between bank one and bank two. Obviously, it's not drawn to scale, but you get what I'm kind of insinuate there. Uh, they're both naturally aspirated, at least for now. However, the LT6 does have much more forged internals than the uh, than the LT2, so that may be changing with the LT, possibly the LT7 that's going to be coming out that's rumored. Uh, they're both also only found in C8 models. 
The LT2 is only found in the CH Stingray. Uh, it does share a plant uh, in New York where other engines are produced, I believe, like the L L87 and the L8T, which are both uh, truck engines. But uh, I'm not too familiar with the truck engines, to be honest with you. But uh, those are, um, uh, it is specific only to the C8 Stingray. Uh, it does not share a block either with the LT1. There are differences between that block and the LT1 block. So like the valley where the oil would drip down otherwise, and um, a few other things there too. Uh, the LT6 is only found in the C8 Z06. It was specifically developed for the C8 Z06. It is the only place where you will find that engine. And they make it a point to talk about how there are no shared parts or there's there, it's an all new engine. Now I know sooner or later somebody's gonna come and say, oh, well, there's like a, a bolt on the valve cover or something that's reused or something like that. And oh, it's got a shared part or whatever. So if you wanna get technical like that, I'm sure there's probably something that may be shared, but it's an all new engine for all intents and purposes. So they both also have a 4.1 inch bore to stroke, or excuse me, uh, bore spacing. So in case you're wondering what that means, so say you have a cylinder, or the block, excuse me, and you're looking at the uh, cylinders that are in uh, the block itself. If you look at the dead center point of one cylinder to the dead center point of the next cylinder over, that distance right there is your bore spacing. So they both happen to have a 4.4 inch bore spacing. I don't know if that was coincidental or if they did that on purpose, but regardless, they have both the same bore spacing. So those are just some of the uh, similar specs. Next, I'll be moving on to the actual engine long block itself. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about here is the actual engine itself, meaning the cylinder heads, the block, the pistons, everything that is make uh, that consists of the long block assembly itself, a bare engine, okay? Now, I've not been lucky enough to get my hands on an LT6 engine. So just keep in mind that everything that I'm telling you here is based off of some pretty confident research that I've been doing and people that I've been speaking to and um, all the information that I've gathered from different collective sources that are all reputable sources, different magazines, so on and so forth, okay? Engineers from uh, other things as well too. So just keep in mind, I'm not, uh, I'm not right 100% of the time, I'm sure of it. So just take everything I'm saying here with that possibility that, hey, I don't know everything because I can't prove it, I haven't got my hands on this yet, but I'm pretty sure that this is all, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty much correct on all of this. So. That being said, I'm going to go into some of the differences here too, okay? So when you go to the LT6 and the LT2, uh, uh, the 6.2 liter LT6, or LT2, excuse me, and then the 5.5 liter LT6 on this side. So again, red is your differences, green is your similarities. I kind of corridor off here all the similarities. I apologize, I know I have terrible handwriting and I'm trying to do the best I can with this board that I have, but I'm doing my best here. So. Uh, the LT2, starting off, the main difference is it has a one-piece block. So the block itself is just one piece. It's all cast and machined, all is one piece. Where the LT6 uh, has a two-piece block. So the way that that block is made is kind of an interesting process, the way that they cast it. But they basically make the top piece and the bottom piece, and then they mate them together, and that's it. They're married together forever. Um, with the way that they are machined and, and made and things like that, you can't take the bottom piece of an LT6 block from a different engine and put it onto the top half of a block from a different LT6 engine. It won't work that way. They're, they're meant to be for, uh, uh, put together forever. So once they're put together, that's it, they're made forever. Now the LT2 ha also has a conventional oil pan on it, even though it is a dry sump oil system, which I'll get to in a minute, which dry sump still have oil pans. But the LT6 does not have a typical oil pan on it. It has the, the bottom piece of the block is referred to as the LCC or the lower crankcase. Now, the way this goes is it actually has the bottom half of the main caps that go onto the crank when it's made it together. And at that point, um, you can still drain the oil from there. There is still a plug, but there's not a conventional oil pan in that sense. And I'll show you in a minute here, there's a, a little picture I can show you where the cartridge uh, canister for the oil filter is actually part of the block itself too. That's where it all comes from. I'll show you that, okay? Uh, going back to LT2, obviously, is a cross-plane crank. The LT6 is a flat-plane crank. Um, this is, uh, there, there's a lot of videos out there explaining a cross plane crank versus a, a, a flat plane crank, okay? I'm not going to get into that because there's a bunch of, bunch of videos out there that you can get into and see that. Um, the only uh, interesting thing about the um, flat plane crank is that the only other major production car that has a flat plane crank 
is the uh, Ford uh, Mustang GT350. But they kind of did their flat plane crank a little different. So if you look at the flat plane crank on the uh, on the LT6 motor, we have a little small drawing up here. You'll have one piston up high, then you'll have another piston low, low, and then high. So those will be your pistons going up and down. And obviously as the two outer ones go down, the two middle ones will go up. And that'll be on one side of the engine, one bank only, where the other side is doing its own thing, but in the same fashion. The GT350, and this is, mind you, usually for more uh, uh, exotic cars as well too, uh, which is where you kind of get that, that uh, Ferrari type sound that you hear. The GT350 did it a little bit differently. So they would have one piston that was high, then they would have a low, then a high, and then a low. So instead of the LT6 where it was up, down, down, up, the GT350 did up, down, up, down. So then as these two came down, these two would go up, which is kind of where it gets its unique sound from. Now, I'm not a big Ford guy. I just personally don't like them. I think a lot of their cars are great. And um, I just was always, my taste was always that more of GM. But the GT350 has a great sound to it. And um, you can actually look up stuff like that and we'll talk about why it sounds like that. This is because Ford hasn't come out and said it specifically, but mostly because they wanted to have a flat plane crank V8 engine that could rev up to, you know, eight, 9,000 RPM or wherever it revs to, but it would still maintain that cross plane crank sound. Now, when you do that, this type of simil, uh, this type of uh, setup, you do uh, sacrifice primary and secondary balances, which I'm not going to get too much into because it's going to kill a lot of the point of this video. You can look that up anyways, but you kind of gained a lot of the advantages of nothing while sacrificing other advantages. Um, but uh, there's, there's some pretty good videos out there. I believe there's one guy called Driving for Answers. He does a very good video on it. So check him out. Uh, he'll explain it very well. Uh, but the way they also did their exhausts on that too is also where that sound comes from. They have a very interesting header. It's like a four into three into one. So like one and four on one and they combine and then two and three have their own. And it's, it's, it's very, it's kind of a, it's unique to the GT350. But I digress, moving on. So cross plane crank versus flat plane crank in the LCC. Now the LT2, when it comes to the pistons itself, it has hyper eutectic pistons where the LT6 has aluminum forged pistons. Now they both have aluminum, or excuse me, forged crank and rods, which I'll get to in a minute here, but the LT2 has hyper eutectic pistons. So just to touch a little bit on hyper eutectic pistons, those are basically pistons that um, are cast, they're not forged, they are cast, but they have a greater silicone content of, I believe it's 12.5% um, within the actual piston itself, within the metal compound. So when you have that, it allows for things like better, uh, tighter clearances and uh, uh, less uh, gap in between, say, the cylinder wall and the actual piston itself. And it's better for power, fuel economy, things like that. And it just makes it more efficient in a lot of ways. But a hyper eutectic piston is a cast piston. It is not forged. So um, the LT6 does have aluminum forged pistons. So you have a whole fully forged bottom end in the LT6. Uh, the LT2 has a conventional, uh, conventional uh, filter that just spins on by hand, where the LT6 has a cartridge type, there's a cap. You take the cap off and you take the cartridge out and you snap it back in and put the cartridge on. This is more than likely due to the fact that the LT6 being a crap, uh, flat plane crank uh, vibrates much more. And if you had a uh, traditional spun on filter, they would think it would vibrate loosely. Maybe it did and during tests, I believe I've actually heard that it did. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. That's more than likely why they did that. Um, the LT2 has eight individual spark wires on it, coming off the coil packs, going to the plugs. Because it's an overhead valve engine, the uh, spark plugs are mounted kind of on the side, where the LT6 has direct coil on plugs. There are no wires. The coil just goes directly onto dual overhead cam. It's just the way that they sit. Uh, the LT2 has the E99 ECU versus the LT6 having an E68 ECU. However, they are both 32 bits and they are running some crazy encryption software on there that has been proven to be very difficult to, to uh, crack open so far. Um, I, I'm willing to bet that the LT6 is going to be even harder to get that ECU open, but I'm not a software engineer. I could be a thousand percent wrong on that. That's just my guess. Um, if you open up the front cover on these things, you'll see that the LT2 has two chains on it running the timing set. 
crank cam and so on and so forth. The second chain is um, uh, dedicated for the scavenge pump that sits in the valley of the LT2 engine. It's not timing related at all, but um, it is run off the camshaft or the cam sprocket, excuse me, to run that uh, secondary, uh, that scavenge pump, that old scavenge pump. While the LT6 has four chains, it has um, a chain going from the crank to uh, kind of like a center sprocket, and then those center sprockets uh, will go, uh, excuse me, there is a, a fifth camshaft in there. Um, so the LT6 actually, remember, has five camshafts. There's two camshafts per cylinder head, but then it also has a fifth camshaft going in the cylinder, like in the valley of the block itself, and that runs the two direct injection fuel pumps. So the four chains, the way you have that, you have one going from the crank up to the, um, uh, the fifth camshaft that runs the uh, two fuel pumps, and then you have two chains that kind of split off on either side, one going to each cylinder head, and then you also have a dedicated uh, chain that runs the oil pump itself. So just to give you an idea what it looks like, let's say this is the crank down here, and this is the camshaft that runs the uh, uh, fuel pumps, and then you have the two camshafts up here for each cylinder head, excuse the drawing, You'll have one chain that goes like that, one chain that goes around like that, and then one chain that goes around like that. But then you'll have the oil pump over to the side, and then you'll have another chain that goes around there. So one, two, three, four, and that's your four chains that it'll come up with. So that's where that comes from. Um, as far as weight goes, it's kind of funny, the LT2 has uh, weighs in at approximately 472 pounds, and the LT6 weighs in at 475 pounds. Now, I don't know if that's with accessories and everything or not, or if that's just a bare block. I was unable to confirm that, so uh, if anybody happens to have the answer to that, please comment below. Um, the funny thing about that, though, is that the block for the LT6 actually weighs 57.1 pounds less than that of the block for the LT2, just a bare block. So, uh, moving on, you all, in the LT2, you have hydraulic lifters. We've seen that in plenty of engines before, the LT1, the LT4, so on and so forth, and you'll see it on truck engines too. Uh, that has a lot to do with the AFM DOD delete, or the AFM DOD um, uh, management system that it has on through the cylinders on and off, whereas the LT6 has a solid valve train. Now, the solid valve train, again, I haven't gotten my hands on an LT6, and anybody who happens to have a Z06, please confirm this for me, but I'm 99% sure. I don't want to say 100 because I haven't seen it for myself, but um, the Z06 does not have a uh, four-cylinder mode. It doesn't have an active fuel management or a DOD delete or anything, or a DOD system on it. Um, so uh, it uh, doesn't go into that four-cylinder mode. That's how it can get away with having the uh, solid valve train. It has these finger followers and solid rocker arms and things like that, and um, so it's all um, taken up with that. But the, uh, the unique thing about the LT6 is that on each individual finger follower that goes down onto the valves itself, there is a shim that goes in between each one. And those shims are specifically selected for that exact valve and for that exact finger follower. You cannot move them around. So if you ever take this engine apart, I don't know if those shims are able to like come off or if they're part of it. But uh, if you ever actually have to get to that point, you better keep track of what shim came off of where because they are all specifically measured three times um, for that exact valve on that exact cylinder, whichever one you're using. So don't mix those up if it ever gets to that point. God knows when down the road. So um, the, uh, the LT6 also has hollow camshafts, by the way, uh, where the LT6 has a solid going all the way through. Or the LT2, excuse me, has a solid going all the way through. The LT6 has hollow camshafts. Um, you also have um, single valve springs on the LT2, and where on the LT6 you have dual valve springs. Um, and on the LT2, you have hollow intake valves measuring at 54 millimeters, and on the LT6, you have titanium intake valves measuring 42 millimeters. So the valves on the LT2 are actually bigger, but there are two valves per cylinder for the intake on the LT6. So 42 times 2 is 84 millimeters. So you've got 84 millimeters of intake valve versus 54 millimeters of intake valve on the LT2. So those are some of your big differences. Now, there are some more differences that I'll kind of touch on a little bit here when I go into this, but you'll kind of see where some of the things are similar to. Now, as far as the similarities, they both have forged cranks. They both have forged connecting rods. They both have aluminum dampeners on the front. However, the LT6's is, is viscous filled probably to reduce uh, mass and rotation and things like that. They both have dry sump oil systems. 
Uh, this is a first for the Stingray. Uh, usually before you had to get at least a Z51 patch to get a dry sump bowl system, but now you get it across uh, all, it's standard for everything. Um, the LT2, however, has a total of four oil pumps, not three. It has four. It has three scavenging pumps, and it also has one oil supply pump. If you don't believe me, look at this. So different uh, LT1 and LT2 is now we have one, two, oh, wow. three scavenge pumps. Yeah. yeah. Um, these two work basically as part of the pump assembly. This is the supply pump. Okay. Um, like so now if you see that, you can also see that the LT6 has a total of seven oil pumps, six scavenging and one supply. Okay. So sometimes you hear people say, oh, the LT2 will have three or six or whatever. You have to take into account that it also has a, a, a supply pump. You have the, the three scavenging pumps, for example, on the LT2 are taking oil from the engine and putting it back into the tank, where the supply pump obviously is taking the oil from the tank and circulating it through the engine. The LT2, uh, the pump in the crank, in the, um, where the front cover goes, right behind the dampener, um, it is kind of like an all-inclusive setup though. I haven't seen the LT6, so I can't really quote, I can't really speak too much of it, but the LT2 has, um, uh, the oil pump or seems like the two scavenging pumps that are part there and the oil supply pump, it's all basically one assembly. So you can't service them separately, at least not to the best of my knowledge. It sure doesn't look like it. And I can't imagine that you would even be able to do this anyways. So if you have to replace one of those pumps, you're actually replacing all three of them because it's all one assembly. Uh, the LT2 is going to use your 0W40 oil, that's uh, the supercar uh, bottle for Mobile One. Uh, Dexos 2 has to be Dexos 2 rated. Where the uh, LT6 uses 5W50. Um, the LT2 has a 7.5 quart capacity of oil. However, if you really let your oil drain, and I can speak from experience on this, if you really let your oil drain over a long time on that, the car will take 8 quarts of oil, but you really got to let it drain for a while where the LT6 takes, um, is, some places say eight, some places say 10 quarts. Uh, I found out that it's actually eight quarts for the actual tank itself, but it sounds like the whole system takes 10 quarts. So, but when you're doing an oil change, again, I haven't done one on one of those. So um, when it gets to that point where I do one, I will, um, no, I will mention it. However, if you happen to have done one or had one done on, you, if you have a Z06 with the LT6 engine, again, please let me know, comment below. Um, each engine has similarities and also have eight individual coil packs and they both have VVT. Uh, however, the LT2, since it only has a, the single camshaft going up that has the exhaust and the intake cams on it, um, it gives you 62 degrees of authority for changing it, for moving it around to adjust timing. Where the LT6 has a 55 degree intake authority and a 27 degree exhaust authority. So um, the LT6 obviously has more variations on that because you have dual overhead cams. Uh, similarities also with the engine, they both have sodium filled exhaust valves. However, the LT2's valves measure in at 40.4 millimeters, where the LT6's measure in at 35 millimeters. Again, the LT2 valve is bigger than a single LT6 valve, but you have to remember the LT6 has two valves, of ex two exhaust valves per cylinder, so you actually have 70 millimeters of exhaust valve real estate per cylinder on that, which is bigger than the 40.4. So those are some of the main um, differences between the engine and the long block itself. Um, I know I didn't hit everything, but um, that's going to be pretty much the meat of it. Um, if you happen to know anything about the things that I've mentioned that I'm not 100% sure of, please comment below. And uh, we'll move on to the next thing here. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about some of the stuff with the exhaust system. There isn't a whole lot here that I'm going to go over because there doesn't seem to be uh, too, too much information out there. Again, this engine is still very, very new. And uh, a lot of this information that I'm giving is kind of on a limited basis. Um, even though there's a lot of things about this that uh, I don't know yet and I would love to know, I haven't found out, but it's just, it's too new of an engine. And even for all intents and purposes, the LT2 is still kind of a new engine. We're still learning about that really ultimately as well too. Um, it does have a lot of similarities to its predecessors, but uh, there are a lot of new things about it. But the LT6 is especially very new. So a couple of differences, there aren't really too, uh, there isn't really too, too much in here. Especially due to the design of the car, obviously with the mid-engine uh, mid car, the exhaust system is a lot shorter. But there are some differences and there are some similarities. Uh, one of the big differences is the headers that come on the actual car itself. So on the LT2, you have four into one headers. They're all equal length headers and they all come into one collector, so it's four into one. Meaning all four exhaust ports go into one big collector and, and that's where it ultimately goes into the rest of the exhaust system. And that's 
have the exhaust scavenging that's going to kind of be uh, optimized for that, for the LT2 engine. For the LT6, obviously because it's a flat plane crank, and due to the firing order and the way things go, they have to change the headers around a little bit. And this also probably changes the sound also a little bit too. So those headers are going to be four into two into one. So two of them go into uh, one port, and then those two ports go into another one. So I'll put some pictures up for you to get an idea of what it looks like right here. But you can see here the four into one headers on the LT2 are right here. Again, four into the one collector. And then the four into two into one collectors for the LT6 engine. Uh, one of the next differences is that obviously both of these cars still have NPP exhausts. Um, if you have the Stingray, the NPP only comes if you have the Z51 package or if you opt for the optional uh, performance exhaust option. Uh, you can get performance exhaust, I believe, on certain model years. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which ones. I think it's 2022, but I'm not sure and on. Uh, but uh, you can get the um, NPP exhaust even without the Z51 package. But if you get the Z51 package, you get it standard or it comes with it. So the NPP on the uh, LT2, more or less, is just a two-stage. Either the valves are open and closed. They open and close under certain conditions, under certain parameters, what gear you're in, what speed you're going, what mode you're in, so on and so forth. There's a whole big, long explanation about that. But they're not really variable. Um, to the best of my knowledge, they don't open and close really like halfway or anything like that. Um, but um, I know previous cars have done that, but I haven't confirmed that on the LT2 at all. Uh, the LT6 does for sure have variable NPP valves, and these valves can vary in two degree increments going open and closed. Now again, as to exactly how that goes, uh, I couldn't tell you because I haven't gotten my hands on one, and I haven't really been able to play with it and really understand to see what's going on with it, but uh, they can open and close in two degree increments. And the way the muffler is set up is also obviously a different shape, being that the LT6 has the center exit exhaust, and the LT2 has the side exit exhaust. It's on the outer sides of it, just like the uh, e, the upcoming E-Ray. So um, I'll show a little bit. I'll, I'll show exactly what those two exhausts look like right here. You can see the LT2 has the NPP valves on the side, and then you can see uh, right here you have the LT6 with the uh, NPP valves in the center because it's obviously a center mounted exhaust. So. Um, obviously, like I just said, side exhaust and center exhaust. The LT6's uh, exhaust, um, I believe it's just uh, specifically to the muffler, but I'm not 100% sure. It is 20 pounds lighter than the, uh, the on the uh, LT2. Uh, if anyone's ever seen the LT2 factory exhaust or the factory muffler, it's a pretty big muffler. It's a big suitcase style muffler. Um, it's pretty heavy too. I want to say it weighs like 75 pounds or something crazy like that. Um, it is pretty heavy, um, but... Um, I can't remember if it's somewhere in the 70s or somewhere in the 50 pound range, but I think it's actually closer to 70 or 75, but it is pretty heavy. Uh, um, the other big thing about the LT6 is also going back to what I was talking about before with the engines, uh, with the actual engine systems, there is no um, uh, displacement on demand system on so it doesn't go into V4 mode. Again, 99% sure if that's the case. If you've uh, seen this otherwise, please comment let me know, but uh, I'm pretty sure about that because if you look at the valve train on this car, um, up close, so there's, it doesn't, I don't see a way that it could possibly turn it off. But um, since I haven't seen one, I can't 100% confirm it. I'm never going to 100% confirm something unless I can actually 100% confirm it. So uh, you're not going to find any AFM valves on the exhaust itself. And again, I'll show you the picture again right here. Uh, I don't see any AFM valves anywhere. So I don't believe that uh, that's going to be the case on the LT6. The only other thing about the LT6 that I'm not 100% sure compared to the LT2 is the catalytic converters. Um, if they're different, if they're the same, if they're carried over from the LT2 engine, um, that I can't be sure about. They look the same to me, um, but they, they look in appearance, they look the same, but that doesn't mean the internals of them are the same. Um, I haven't been able to find any specific part numbers on them either way, on the LT6 especially, to compare part numbers to see if they happen to be the same. They could possibly, but again, I haven't got my hands on one, so I'm not sure, but they do appear visually to be the same. But, um, again, I can't confirm. The only other thing that um, is uh, similarities between all these is that they both have NPPs, or at least NPP available on the Stingray, but they both have equal length headers. But the big difference on that being the 4 to 1 for the LT2 and the 4 to 2 to 1 for the LT6 engine. So, just some exhaust differences. And um, there isn't a whole lot here, obviously, but um, these are just some little things to point out.
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to go over here is the intake system for the two uh, different engines, okay? The intake, uh, especially the manifold, obviously being one of the main uh, party pieces of this engine. It's really what makes this engine special in a lot of ways. On top of a lot of things, the slot plane crank is obviously the uh, probably main attraction too, but the intake and the intake manifold and the way it works is, is a huge, huge part of how this thing works, especially how it can breathe so easily and uh, get as much air as it needs to produce as much horsepower as possible. Um, so, not a whole lot per se to go over in a couple cents really. It's not so much that there are so much differences, it's just that the LT2's intake obviously is, is much more basic than the LT6. It's got moving parts in it, literally, and things like that. The LT2 uh, has the equal length intake runners that are all approximately, they're 210 millimeters each. So each one of the intake runners on this engine are all the same length. So whenever it comes in from the throttle body and air is distributed, it goes down through equal, uh, equal length intake runners. Now, the LT6 has these trumpet type, what they call style intake runners. And these are very special because of the way that they work. They increase volumetric efficiency greater to a factor of one. So basically what that means is that you're actually getting more air into the car or more air into the engine than atmospheric pressure is there. So in a way, it's kind of like, it's kind of like boost, but not really. It's actually sucking in more air than it, should be able to. So that's how it gets a lot more air to create a lot more. And when you get more air, you get more fuel, you get more power. So as far as whether or not those are equal length runners, um, I haven't been able to find anything. If you visually look at them, they don't look like they're equal length runners when they're sitting on top. You can see that. However, if you look at, say, the way the trumpet goes down, and I'll show you right here, uh, you can kind of see how the trumpet goes down now. They, they might be offset a little bit. So yeah, that, that runner right there goes down a little bit in the front, but it might go down further into the engine and therefore they all might be equal length. Again, I haven't played with one, I haven't seen one, I can't be sure, I don't know, but um, it's kind of uh, funny the way they did that. I haven't been able to find any material showing that they are equal length runners, so I'm not gonna say that they are. Um, when you have the throttle bodies, the, they appear to be the same throttle bodies, however, they're, uh, they're both 87 millimeter throttle bodies, however, the LT2 obviously just has one throttle body, where the LT6 has two twin throttle bodies. Uh, twin obviously being the big theme of this engine, and I'm gonna go over that in a little bit with all the uh, twin similarities that it has, um, because this engine is kind of a little bit of an homage to the space program with nicknamed Gemini, but I'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, the tuning valves that you, found, that you find on the intake manifold are these little miniature throttle bodies that are 72 millimeters each, okay? so. These things open and close depending on where it is in the RPM range and the power band in order to optimize airflow to get into the engine. So at lower RPM, certain ones will be open and closed and higher RPMs, vice versa, or they'll be all open or all closed, things like that. And it will help optimize airflow for uh, what is going on at that time. So with these tuning valves, I'm gonna refer to them as tuning valves uh, one, two, and three, okay? So if we have the engine itself, uh, let's say, so say we're looking at a bird's eye view of the intake manifold, okay? And you got a tuning valve there, there, and there, and then you have your two throttle bodies coming in right here. So this will be the, down here, this would be like the, the back of the car because the throttle bodies are pointing towards the uh, bumper, the rear bumper of the car, even though this is the front of the engine. So for just for, for uh, uh, purposes of, for this video, I'm going to call these throttle uh, tuning valves one, two, and three. That is not as per GM, it's just what I'm calling it as per here, okay? So tuning valve number one, which is the tuning valve that is closest to the throttle body, operates independently on its own, meaning it's not married up with the other two. It can open and close doing whatever it needs to. Tuning valves two and three are married together. So if one of them is open, the other one is open. If one of them is closed, the other one is closed, and so on and so forth. So this one is independent of these, and I'll show you a little bit of a clip right here where you can see the actual valves opening and closing um, either together or independently. So, because I know there seems to be a little bit of confusion out there as to which ones open and close uh, together and which ones uh, don't. So um, the intake uh, manifold on this car, like I said, is, is one of the main party pieces of it, and there is a whole lot going on in there. Um, so it's, it's a relatively complex intake manifold. Um, the only other similarity that I can think of is they appear to be both, both be made out of some sort of composite plastic. So, um, not a whole lot with them. Otherwise, it's really not so much as the similarities and differences as the uh, complexity of the intake manifold, which to be honest with you, 
with the way that it works and how it works, you really could probably do a whole separate video on just that intake manifold alone. Okay, so just to wrap all this up here, these are just some random miscellaneous things that are going to be a little bit different about the engines and the cars themselves a little bit. Just some little weird things that you'll find here and there. And again, this is not complete or extensive. This is just with all the information that I was able to find at the time. And I'm well aware that there's probably going to be information come out that comes out after this video is put up and made that is going to um, be much more uh, detailed than what I'm getting into right here. So uh, a couple little silly things is, uh, number one, the starter motor on these things. On the LT2, you have a typical side mount starter. So it's going to be on, if you are looking at the um, engine, if you're looking at it from the front cover, it's going to be on the left side of the engine if you're looking at it head on from the front cover. So that means it would be on the passenger side of the car. A little typical side, side mounted starter, just like say on an LT1, LT4, LT5, whatever. The LT6 has a valley mounted starter, which I'll show you right here. This is what it looks like. So it actually sits in the valley and the arbiter and the gearing from the starter actually comes in and hits the flywheel that way. Um, another thing about them is the final drive ratios. I'm not going to sit here and go over the uh, actual all the ratios in the transmission themselves because I'm pretty sure they're all the same, but I could be wrong. I haven't verified it, but I'm not going to go too deep into the weeds on that one because, again, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds. I just kind of want to go over some general stuff here. However, final drive ratios have been changed for the Z06 versus a Z51, even the non-Z51 Stingray. So the non-Z51 Stingray, you have a final drive ratio of 4.9 to 1, and with the Z51, you have a final drive ratio of 5.2 to 1. With the Z06, you have a final drive ratio of 5.56 to 1. So uh, there's your uh, ratio there. Probably because obviously it's a more oriented, um, it's a more oriented for the track rather than I'll say ultimate high speeds. So therefore it has a lower final drive ratio. Um, the LT6 also has an eight core oil cooler, which is high capacity. Um, and it runs inside that LCC that I was talking about before, that lower crankcase. Um, the LT6 also obviously has the twin theme that's going on. Everybody's heard about this theme. This, um, it has the little uh, rocket ship on it. That was a tribute to the Gemini space program. Because we all know astronauts loved Corvettes back in the day. So all over the car, you're going to see a twin theme everywhere. Between the twin throttle bodies, the twin intake runners, the twin set of camshafts, the double overhead cams, the um, twin fuel pumps, so on and so forth. It's a twin theme all over the place on this particular engine. So um, just to, again, you're going to find these little things everywhere. Supposedly they say that there are 54 different uh, little, those little rocket ship uh, drawings that are all over the engine, even supposedly one on top of each piston. So if you ever took it off, it'll be right there. Another thing about the LT62 is the uh, cooling capacity of it. So it has a 50% larger cooling capacity on the system. Not necessarily volumetric, but actual cooling capacity. This has a lot to do with the fact that the Z06 with the LT6 engine has a front center mounted radiator on the car, whereas the Z51 or the Stingray just has those two, um, and one on each side of it. Now they also have that one on the side grill on the uh, inlet on the passenger side. I haven't seen it on the Z06, so I don't know if it's there or not. Another big thing is the cooling uh, actual capacity of it. The LT6 engine in the Z06 has a cooling capacity uh, volume of 23.5 liters of coolant where the uh, Stingray has 21.5. I'm assuming that's with the Z51 package because it is the higher capacity cooling system. It seems to use a 40-60 coolant mixture as well too, as opposed to where you see a lot of the cars that traditionally would just use a 50-50. But uh, another big thing that I was kind of going on a little bit uh, that I want to touch on a little bit that I don't think I've touched on too much before was the uh, uh, main caps on this car. So the LT2 has a six bolt main. It's got four bolts on top, but it has two bolts coming in from the side, like right here. You'll see the four bolts for each main cap on top and then the two on the side that hold that main cap in place, where the LT6 only has a four bolt main cap. Again, this is probably largely due uh, to the fact that this is a two piece block and the lower crankcase kind of bolts up to it and is married to it forever. But you can also see that there are 10 individual dowel pins on the uh, lower crankcase that bolt to the block itself too. So I'm sure that that um, is there for obviously alignment purposes and possibly, I don't know if it helps with strength or not. So I, I don't think so, dowel pins typically don't do that, but it's only got a four bolt main as opposed to a six bolt main. The other thing I kind of want to touch on a little bit too is going back to the dry sump oil system for the uh, two different cars. The LT2, like I said, has uh, four total pumps, three scavenge and uh, one supply. 
in the um, LT2 oil pump assembly, you have the two scavenge pumps and the supply pump that I'll show you right here. And then the LT6, you have a uh, much more complicated one too. So the reason that it has these different pumps, and I'm going to touch on the LT6 in a second here, but the reason for the LT2 is that you have the one scavenge pump for the valley, one scavenge pump for bays one and four, one scavenge pump for bays two and three, and then the supply pump itself. The LT6 has a total of six scavenge pumps plus one supply pump. Out of those six scavenging pumps, four of them are for the, we'll just call it the block, okay? The four individual uh, bays are sealed off independently, so you have one pump per bay, as you can see right here, to um, scavenge oil from there and send it back into the tank to ultimately get recirculated. Then you have another scavenge pump, which is for the cylinder heads, both cylinder heads, it takes it from each, and then there is another scavenge pump for the front cover, as it says. And again, this system, remember, has its own dedicated chain, so the oil pump, which I'll show you right here, and then you can see all four of the chains as well, too. There's one for the oil pump, one for going to each cylinder head, and then there is that fourth one to drive the um, uh, fifth camshaft that drives the dual fuel pumps inside the valley. So again, just some miscellaneous things, too. There's a couple of the random miscellaneous things, that you'll find if you break it down a little bit too, like different alternators and so on and so forth. And there's a lot of difference. Like I said, this is an all new engine and um, it's completely from scratch. So there's going to be a lot of things that were completely different about this engine. But again, this is just a, 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 a general overview of all that different stuff. Okay, so one more thing I want to touch on here that I meant to mention before talking about uh, when I was speaking about the exhaust system and some other things, particularly with the fuel injection also, is the unique placement of the fuel injector on this. So on this, they put the fuel injector on the exhaust side of the um, engine or exhaust side of the cylinder head where you can see right here where kind of where's the uh, engine cutaway. So there's the fuel injector right there, still with direct injection, still going directly in the combustion chamber, but you'll notice it's on the exhaust side as opposed to the intake side. Normally they're on the intake side, but they just couldn't get it in there. Now, they moved that over there for two reasons. Number one, by moving the injector to the other side of the um, cylinder head, uh, that allows for them to put a uh, bigger sized intake valve on the intake side and therefore to get more air in. Uh, secondary, what they want to do is when you realize, uh, when you have air coming in on the intake side and you have the injector on the same side as well too, when you spray the fuel in there, when the air is kind of turbulent around, um, sometimes this isn't necessarily good for emissions, especially for a car that's kind of idling a lot and things like that. So due to other circumstances with the engine, they put it over there to create more turbulence to uh, have a better, um, kind of uh, a little bit better for emissions but also it creates a little bit better of a fuel mixture. Now, one of the problems that this, uh, suggest, one of the problems that um, this caused was that obviously you have the injector right there and it's right next to the hot exhaust manifold. So if you'll notice right there in the cylinder head, right above the injector, there is a little jacket. That's an extra cooling jacket of which uh, water and coolant flows through to help keep temperatures down. This is just another unique thing to this engine that they had to do. You don't typically see uh, injectors on the exhaust side of engines, but uh, in this case, they kind of had to put it there for a number of reasons, and it seemed to work out to their advantage. So, I hope this helped. Um, again, I, I'm well aware of the fact that there's plenty of information out there that I didn't include in this video. I did my best to kind of just summarize everything as briefly as possible here to give you a general overview of it. If I was really to deep dive into this thing and really talk about all the differences between the two engine, engines, we'd be here for hours, and I'm not about to do that. So. I'm also well aware of the fact that there's a lot of information that is not out on this engine yet, and I can't give any concrete facts on it. There's probably going to be some videos coming on later on that are going to make this video, um, uh, or not, not going to have, or going to have much more information than this video that I've made here. I'm well aware of that. I'm just trying to put something out there to give a general overview on this stuff. So. Um, if you know of anything that I touched on that uh, you maybe have a little bit more information on, please feel free to comment below. Let me know. Other than that, I hope this helps. Good luck.